webinar, How Cascade Became a Leader in Client Service. I'm Alan Siegert with Navitar. Joining us today is John Van Sant, President of Cascade Financial Management. John is going to walk us through Cascade's onboarding client and advisor servicing processes. Specifically, he's going to tell us how he used Navitar to build the implementation and the tracking of onboarding, client meetings, and also of service requests. John will also provide some insights on Cascade's specific structure and some background on how they approached and how they leveraged Navitar technology for their processes. We're also joined by Navitar's Caden Konkar. Caden leads all Navitar products and services, and he's here to address any technical questions or product questions that you ask during today's session. And at any time, if you want to raise a question, you can enter the questions in the GoToWebinar panel on your screen, and we're going to answer them all at the end of the webinar. So we're coming to you today from Navitar headquarters in New York's financial district, although John is in Denver. So let's start off. John, uh, who do you think has more snow today? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Who do you think has more snow today? Uh, Are you in New York or are you in Denver? I'm going with you guys because it's nice and sunny here. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, do you want to share your screen and uh, kick off this webinar? Yes. Are you able to see everything? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, just give kind of a quick run through on today's agenda and then kind of dive right in. So, um, as Alan mentioned, we're going to uh, go through. Uh, kind of managing the client service process. For us, it's kind of soup to nuts, starting from onboarding, uh, incorporating, obviously, the new account process is an important part of uh, everything that we do from day to day. Uh, talk a little bit about what we are doing from a client meeting, from an implementation and tracking perspective, and then what we have uh, built out uh, utilizing Navitar service request uh, system and process, and then we'll open it up for uh, questions after that. A uh, little bit about who we are. Uh, we were founded in 1994. Uh, we're a boutique wealth management firm, so you know most of what we're doing is really you know working with uh, you know high net worth individuals, families, business foundations, mostly on the retail side. Um, we don't you know do too much from an institutional perspective, and you know I wouldn't really classify us as an asset management firm um, either. Uh, really, you know, working with uh, we have, you know, we have 10 advisors. Most of our advisors are employees, uh, so we're providing full service and support. Uh, we have six offices uh, and everything, but with everything centralized out of the uh, downtown Denver office. Currently, manage uh, just under 500 million in assets. Uh, we have an eight-person client service team, uh, one uh, full per, uh, full-time chief compliance officer, and then myself as dedicated management, uh, overseeing day to day. Uh, one of the other new, unique things about Cascade is we are uh, both a broker dealer and an investment advisory firm. Uh, we're really an investment advisory firm that just happens to own our own broker dealer. Uh, but we do have that platform and that is certainly an important piece as well um, and part of the reason why uh, we've had to spend so much time and energy really building out the client service piece because uh, we are, you know, from a back office, office operations perspective, um, you know, managing uh, everything through the, the broker dealer as well. Moving on, um, talk a little bit about the client service process and build out um, and give you a little bit of background as far as, you know, what, you know, kind of what we went through and in, in, in order to, um, you know, really build it, you know, build everything out. Like most small to mid-sized firms in our industry, you know, we have five plus different functional areas, marketing business development, investment management, client service and advisor service, accounting and payroll, HR and compliance. Um, and like most small, medium-sized businesses, we obviously, you know, limited on resources when it comes to personnel and technology, you know, versus some of the larger firms. Um, you know, to order, so in order to improve effective, effectiveness and efficiency, uh, you know, most firms like us are looking to integrate as much as possible, you know, first at the platform level and then at the process level. So our goal and, and what we've really been working on and building out over the last three years uh, is really, you know, looking to build a fully integrated turnkey platform that integrates all of the different functional areas 
at, at some form or at some level. For us, you know, the hub is really Navatar and will hopefully be the starting point for everything we do with integrations to all the other systems to help streamline and manage those processes. Uh, you know, what makes Navatar so powerful is the ability and the functionality to provide a more integrated platform. Um, you know, why, why Navatar versus just going with Salesforce uh, directly? As most of you know, Navatar is an overlay, you know, utilizing Salesforce technology. Well, anyone that has worked with Salesforce, um, you know, for a significant amount of time knows how complex the system actually is. Um, and, you know, for yeah. us, we don't have the technical expertise in-house in order to, uh, you know, be able to, you know, build out what we need. Uh, so we, you know, utilize an avatar to uh, support that build out. In addition, uh, you know, the, com the combination of industry complexes along with system complexities uh, provides even a, even a more of a significant hurdle to overcome, uh, especially the uniqueness of each firm in our industry really compounds that complexity, making it even more difficult to, you know, attain even kind of partial integration as far as when you're looking at integrating all of the different, uh, you know, functional areas across the business. The way that we approached the problem was to really break out the different functional areas um, into different phases and then uh, prioritize those phases. So, you know, we looked at current systems, processes, determine what options we have available if any, uh, if we were not able to integrate, we'd evaluate what options are available in order to integrate, uh, or we'd simply build a process to accommodate. So for us, client service and advisor service process are really the most complex, uh, you know, is really the most complex portion and really one of the most important pieces of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, from as far as from the complexity standpoint, both from a process workflow and then it's also obviously one of the most time-intensive parts of our business as well. Um, and it's also, you know, for us, it's a huge, you know, it's part of our value proposition as far as working with the advisors. Um, specifically, what I'm referring to is the, is the client onboarding, uh, the ongoing client reviews, and, day, and then obviously just managing the day-to-day -day client uh, and advisor service and support. So with significant help from Navatar, we've been able to fill we've been able to build out our first major phase of our integrated platform, which is the client and advisor service and support. Um, and I'll get into, you know, doing a, a system demo around that. Before diving in, I want to give just a, a little bit of, a, of an outline as far as our service model and structure just to provide a little bit more, um, I think it'll provide a little bit more context as far as, you know, how we built it specifically for us. Um, our goal was really to build a centralized business model um, and, and what we did was we developed a client service team. So I refer to it as a functional design, a functional client service design versus a silo model. So what I mean by the silo model is kind of more of the traditional model in our industry where uh, you have a sales assistant and that sales assistant is responsible for, you know, one or more advisors depending on, you know, the size of the advisor, the complexity, um, you know, and that sales assistant is also responsible for wearing multiple hats, sometimes, you know, up to 15 or 20 different hats, right? They're doing everything maybe from trading to scheduling to setting up new accounts to asset movement, et cetera. Well, what we did was develop a client service team, and then we broke out all of those different functional areas within client service. So for us, uh, you know, for our structure, it's, you know, roughly six different areas. Um, you know, we have asset movement, account maintenance and processing, new account setup, uh, uh, scheduling, advisor servicing, um, et cetera. And then, you know, we have each person on the client service team has primary and secondary roles and responsibilities within each of these areas. Um, and this is a way for us to, you know, really um, expand out our model both from a capacity and a workload perspective and also uh, you know, not overload anyone on the client service team. It also you know, allows the service team to be a little bit more specialized in their, you know, in their specific area um, and not have to be, you know, wearing, uh, you know, wearing multiple hats uh, at any one time. The goal for, you know, the really the, the goal around this was to build a process-centric model uh, where we are utilizing, um, the, you know, we're, we're utilizing the system to integrate workflows to hopefully improve efficiency and execution. 
and it was really kind of two, you know, two main focuses on this, is the, you know, really more of a customer-centric model. So, you know, we want something that gives us the ability to provide capacity and capability to provide, you know, a, a more consistent and standardized service level across all of our clients. Um, and then, you know, an advisor-centric model that allows us to, um, you know, provide more additional services to the advisor, um, allow them focus on the highest payoff activities rather than dealing with, uh, you know, uh, managerial administration, operational compliance related activities. Um, and then, uh, as you can see on the screen, obviously the goals, um, kind of in order and of, impor of importance, of importance um, you know, goals really provide a more consistent level. For us, um, it, the focus is really on accuracy uh, with, uh, you know, obviously we're looking to gain certain efficiency as well, but, um, you know, our, our biggest goal is making sure that we get it right the first time, um, especially when it comes to asset movement and, and, and it's the little things, right? Those are the things that, um, when those go wrong, those are things that really upset, you know, clients and advisors. Um, obviously expanding capacity by utilizing workflows, get into a little bit of, you know, we'll get into the demo as far as what we've done with that, with, uh, with Navitar. Um, and then obviously standardized process, the more that you can standardize across, uh, you know, across the, the business, uh, the, liar, the higher likelihood you'll see that, that consistency and the higher level of service that you're looking for. All right, moving into, uh, moving into the demo, I'm going to pull up my Salesforce here. Salesforce Navitar overlay. So um, I've got a test client here. I'm just going to dive into, uh, you know, kind of starting with the onboarding process and, and you know, what that looks like and how we uh, utilize and, and process that from a back end. So we have everything um, built into service request. And so uh, what we've done is uh, within service request, we have two record types. We have client meeting and service request. What we've done within client meetings, so this screen uh, really accomplishes two things. As you can see, we have two different uh, meeting stages here. Uh, so we have onboarding and client reviews. So this one screen, um, you know, depending on what is chosen, uh, allows us to, uh, you know, utilize the, the appropriate um, work, uh, workflows. And then depending on what's chosen here, the, then the, the stage subtype uh, comes up and, and these are the you know different options that are available uh, within here. So these are you know from a from a process standpoint when a client is coming in going through the onboarding process, uh, this is what you know th this is what the you know this is kind of each stage of of the process. Um, the other thing that we've been able to do within the system is provide um, some level of flexibility as well for each of the advisors. Um, so you know we know that not all advisors do everything the exact same way. Um, so while the process is standardized, you know, from a, from a subtype perspective, um, having this advisor subtype allows us the, you know, the ability to provide some additional, you know, flexibility and customization within there. The other thing that Navitar was also able to build out for us was this auto create um, update event field. So if this box is checked, you know, depending on, on the, the meeting date and time is put in here, this will automatically be added to the calendar. So rather than, you know, the, the person that's running, the client service team member that's running through this, having to then also go and add the, the event to the calendar, um, this is just, you know, one more click and also, um, you know, by having it auto added obviously eliminates the, um, you know, eliminates the, the error of, you know, maybe, you know, forgetting to get added to the calendar, et cetera. So when I click save here, what happens is we have, uh, depending on the, adv the advisor, you know, depending on the meeting stage, the subtype, and then the advisor subtype, uh, based on what's chosen, then uh, kicks off, uh, we, we utilize uh, Navitar's workflow engine, uh, they refer to it as AutoPlan. So what this does is, as you can see, there's the auto plan and process. So this kicks off, uh, you know, a workflow, and here's the, you know, associated tasks uh, that we have, you know, with the discovery meeting and, and you know, who it's, you know, who, who it's assigned to um, on the client service team. So uh, Kelly would have just received 
uh, an email outlining you know these different tasks, and then she'll um, you know walk through walk through the process. And then as you can see down here um, in the activity history, this is the you know the event that was added to the calendar. So um, you know the the team would walk through, the team and the advisor would walk through. Um, obviously, once these are closed out. Um, Kelly would then come back in and would, you know, adjust the meet stage to the to the next round, and um, or you know, once the next meeting stage is on, um, th this would go through and we go through the same the same process again, et cetera. I'm not going to go through not going to go through each one. I think that that gives a uh, kind of an overview. If there's any you know specific questions at the end, I'd be happy to go through this. Um, the other component, the other um, custom component that we had built out uh, prior to, well, prior, I'll touch on prior to getting into um, the client meeting process is NAF, which stands for New Account Form. So this uh, is a specific wizard that we had built out utilizing um, a, a different workflow technology. It's a, it's a more robust workflow technology within, uh, uh, within Navitar. What this allows us to do and, and what we did was we um, basically outlined every possible um, you know, scenario when it comes to a new account perspective and we, we were able to build this wizard um, utilizing all of those different components. Um, so as you can see, it kind of starts with the custodian, uh, you know, based on the custodian and you know, how, that, you know, how the account is going to be funded. Uh, that really then drives the rest of the you know, the rest of the process. Just kind of quickly run through here and show you what that looks like. And so as it goes through, you can see that I've, I chose Pershing. So you know these all of these questions are going to be specific to Pershing and all, also the asset movement. Quickly go through just to built in all the account types. So you know based on uh, each different. Account type as a component. Obviously, if it's an IRA, um, you know there's going to be specific paperwork that's associated with that, um, as well as uh, obviously there's you know beneficiaries. Uh, we also taught, we also have built in you know different RMD components. That way, we know you know as we're getting the account set up whether we need to um, review you know whether we need to review you know whether an RMD was taken, et cetera. Asking you know which of the you know which of the different uh, funding uh, you know because I we I, I had originally put in ACAT transfer so it's you know the system knows to ask okay how is that going to be funded just additional questions we've also built in workflows on the back end so um, you know if these boxes are checked it will it will click it'll uh, generate individual tasks for uh, either the advisor or or a person on the team in order to um, accomplish what, or you know in order to complete what we need from the new account perspective and then here's kind of our different options so these are you know from a, our platform perspective some of the different things that that we have you know whether it's going to be brokerage whether it's going to be you know an alternative investment um, or one of our you know or one of our managed accounts and then you know here are kind of the different models that we utilize so this is an advisory program so we know that obviously advisory there's going to you know there needs to be a, a fee and then we can outline you know where that is billed to et cetera. Quickly click through some of these additional questions, um, and so what it does is it comes up to this screen. This is kind of a, a you know this is basically a total of all of the information that was entered. Click through and finished, and what happened is as soon as I clicked uh, finish. Uh, the client service team was just notified that you know basically a new account form was entered. So it's the advisor's responsibility to go go through and enter the new account form. I'll click in here, and this is what the client service team gets. So this is basically all of you know, assuming that the you know everything was completed as part of the NAF wizard. Uh, the team has you know now they have all the information that they need in order to complete that new account form. You can see lots of different fields, uh, and then if you know you're utilizing a, a laser app or a DocuPace, you'd have the ability to then push you know push this data um, you know into laser app or DocuPace and you know pre-populate 
the forms that are uh, you know the forms that are uh, required around that. Going back to uh, service request, talk a little bit about what we are doing from a client meeting. So once again, back to the screen, and you can see two stages. So um, obviously, I have the onboarding and then the client review. So you know, for most firms, uh, advisors, you know, they have you know some type of ongoing client review in place. I know for us, you know, prior to uh, you know really implementing anything with uh, with Navitar. Uh, it was very ad hoc in nature, or you know, it was something that was being kind of tracked, you know, via Excel and maybe implemented in Outlook, or maybe implemented in a, you know, in some type of CRM. Uh, the goal with this was to really create a full, uh, you know, a very full and robust uh, client meeting process that both, uh, you know, that both where we can implement client meeting and review, along with track client meeting and review as well. Um, once again, um, we have you know some additional kind of customization uh, functionality. So for us, we really just broke it into two categories. We have a client review, which is really you know more of the the formal review, which happens you know maybe quarterly, quarterly or semi-annually or annually, and then we have the non-review. So this is really more of a uh, you know the touch point. You know, I have a a client or an ideal client. I want to you know I don't want to have a review with them um, every month, a formal review every month, but I do want to reach out. Um, this gives us the ability to track, and then once again, um, you know, we have additional, you know, customization and function functionality um, at the advisor level as well. So once again, uh, once I click save, this will then uh, kick off the appropriate auto plans and auto plan you know tasks that are associated with this and as you can see here there's some some additional uh, fields um, as you can see we have uh, a client we have a frequency field and then we have um, uh, you know the date and time of the last field so what these you know assuming that these fields are completed what this allows us to do is run you know reports on it on a weekly basis to see you know who we have upcoming so this is, you know, this would be the, the tracking component. So, you know, based on what's in here, we know, you know, we know that, you know, this is set up for a review, uh, for the formal review biannually, non-review monthly. Um, so, you know, when we when we're running those reports, and you know, we have someone on the team that is just fully dedicated to, um, you know, managing the the scheduling and the client meeting process. Uh, so she's, you know, running those uh, running those reports and and managing. All of this on behalf of the advisors. So all of this is being done through the client service team. Um, you know, the advisor will come in here if they end up having kind of a non-review meeting uh, that wasn't scheduled. They can then come in here and update that. That way, we can you know keep the frequency um, on track with the you know the meeting date and times. All right. Lastly, I uh, want to show what we are doing. Um, from a service request perspective. So as, as we talked about before, you had, we have two record types in here, service request. So kind of going back to uh, what I had uh, talked about in regards to kind of the different functional uh, areas um, and, and breaking out the different you know, functional areas of client service, what we've done is you know, broke out, obviously, asset movement, client account, and then Within here, we have a subtype. So these are all of the, you know, associated tasks or requests that we could think of. So what we did initially to create this was put together a spreadsheet, what we call the client service standards, um, and outlined, you know, every possible task, and then you know, kind of categorized and put them in these, you know, in these different functional areas. And then we also have a standard on there as well. You know, if a request for the if a if a specific request. ACH request is received but at this time of day, you know, it needs to be processed at, at this point or, you know, the team has a day to get it done or whatever it is. Obviously, most asset movement is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be more time sensitive and, and immediate in nature. So I will just uh, say asset request. So obviously, the advisor would come in here to, to enter the request or if a client, you know, calls the client service team directly. Um, 
they will, you know, they will enter the request. Uh, you know, the, the one rule that we have for anything, you know, anything client related must go into the system. Um, you know, it's the only way for us to ensure that, you know, we have a, a complete and accurate living record of the client. Um, so, but this tool was really created for the advisor so that they just have the quick ability to, to go in and enter this. Um, as you can see over here, we have different status updates. Every time this status, uh, every time, you know, this status is changed, uh, the advisor automatically receives an email, um, you know, notifying them of the status change. And then anything entered into, anything entered into this text, text box is included in that email. Um, so what we did with Navitar, you know, the, the, serv the service request um, custom object was, uh, you know, just kind of a, was a base, basically a baseline um, custom object within Navitar. So we really worked closely with them to help us build out so that, um, you know, this, is, this was kind of specific to our needs. If you wanted to, we don't, we don't currently have um, any kind of auto plans or workflow functionality set up with this because most of these are, you know, most of these requests are um, fairly simple, but you certainly could have, um, you know, auto plans or, or some type of workflow functionality uh, connected with this. What we do have, uh, click save. What we do have is an approval process that Navitar built for us. So what this does is this really creates a queue. And this queue, so I, by clicking that, the client, I, I, the client service team just received an email saying that they had uh, a new service request available. And then what they'll do is they'll go, they'll go into here, and as soon as it's done, they'll utilize uh, you know, they'll utilize this approval history and, and approval process functionality uh, to prove, and this provides, uh, you know, basically a full audit trail. Or, you know, if maybe they, you know, need to update the, uh, maybe they need to update the status uh, to, you know, waiting on someone else, uh, they click save. That will then um, update the, you know, the approval history. Basically, this provides a nice audit trail for, for everything that's going on. Um, and then once again, once the status, you know, once this is changed, the advisor automatically receives um, an email updating them on, um, you know, updating them on the, you know, the progress of the service request and what's going on. In addition, you know, the email also provides a link. So if they want to click back to the service request to get a little bit more information about what's going on, um, they can do that as well. And with that, I'll bring back the... PowerPoint. Uh, John, that that was that was great. Could you go back to the processes slide? We had a question from Amy. Uh, when I don't think she can quite see that slide. Somehow it got it gets compressed when you're showing it, and she mustn't be on a very large screen. But if you could just kind of run through the the key processes again, or um, within the system, or. Uh, that, that are on that slide that that you were uh, that you're pointing to right now. This one right here. Yeah. Are you able to, are you able to see those? I I think those of us with large screens can see it. I, I okay. think the uh, question came in from Amy. She's probably on a on a smaller laptop. Here, I'll just do this. Oh, easier? perfect. There we go. Nice, nice. Okay. Uh, Amy, uh, in the in the question, uh, she she wanted to know what are the six areas of client services. If you could just go through those again. Yeah. So for us, the the different functional areas are really you know we just kind of broke out the uh, kind of just the you know it's really the main pieces or components of client service. So for us, it's asset movement, account maintenance and processing, new account setup, advisor servicing and then the scheduling client meeting components as well. Okay. And then gonna... we've, also, we've also taken it a little bit further and I've also included um, technology and compliance. You saw that those were options within the service request as well. So, you know, we're slowly incorporating kind of some of those other pieces that are, you know, not specific to client service, but we're still, you know, able to utilize the technology for that. Okay, we've got a question from Andrew. What were you using to do all this before Navitar? Sure. So, um, 
originally, so we we started, we were actually utilizing um, a different Salesforce system. Uh, so we started with that system about three years ago. Um, and, you know, we just, we, we were not able to, uh, you know, build out the, the functionality that we were, you know, that we were looking for. Um, you know, we kind of had in our minds what we wanted to do. Um, but, you know, the Salesforce is a, is a very, very, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a difficult, it, it, there's, Salesforce is great because it provides an open, arch, open architecture platform that provides a lot of, you know, the ability to customize a lot of flexibility. Um, but that's also the problem is that, you know, with that, with the ability to customize and that flexibility, um, there's, you know, it, it, you need to have a, a really strong technical background um, in order to really be able to um, customize and implement at the level that we were looking to do. Okay. So, so uh, started, a second. So real quick, yeah, so we, we've been now with um, Navitar about uh, six or seven months, so we were able to really build all of this out, um, you know, within kind of a three or four month period. Okay. Um, that leads to another question uh, from James. Uh, you answered how long it took, which was a, a question, but he also wanted to know if, if this was uh, some sort of open-ended consulting project that uh, you were paying for, or, or how did it all work as it included with the service? And maybe uh, uh, Kayton, who's also on, can, can uh, augment what you say here. Sure. So I believe what it's called, we're, I mean, we, we're ut utilizing the Navitar concierge service, so all of this was, you know, all of this is included, and then, you know, any time... Um, you know, anytime obviously we need to make a change or do anything, you know, I contact, uh, you know, I have my, we have our obviously client service and support people at Navitar that I just reach out to and um, normally hear back very timely, so. Kaden, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, so that's kind of a standard uh, part of the Navitar service. So along with the product, uh, it also includes the concierge service that uh, allows for kind of any kind of uh, customization, training, support, all of that is included. So there's no consulting fees or uh, uh, consulting projects as such that uh, our customers have to do. And Alan, the other thing I'll add on, when you know, when I first kind of started going through the due diligence of reviewing, uh, you know, CRMs, uh, Salesforce actually wasn't even one of the, the CRMs I was looking at because I knew that you know, in order to implement, you really needed to have, uh, you know, the, you either need to have kind of the higher people have the technical, uh, you know, the technical expertise in house, or um, you know, you work with a consultant kind of on a one-off basis, which um, can, you know, it, it's really expensive up front, and then you know, on an ongoing basis, it, it, it from a logistics perspective, it becomes. I think uh, more difficult to to manage and deal with. So I like the you know that obviously that's what I like about Navitar is the ability to um, you know kind of have an uh, you know an all-in-one service and not have to work, be worrying about you know what the billable hours are going to be associated with that. Okay. Uh, another question from another Andrew. Uh, hello, wondering how you guys handle multiple operational requests for the same client at the same time. Sure. So we require, you know, we require each individual request to be entered uh, individually. Um, and same with the new account, you know, same with the new account process. So, you know, if we have, you know, if we have a client coming in that's opening up five or six accounts, uh, the advisor needs to go through, you know, the wizard five or six times, um, you know, in order in order to do that. Because it's really the only way that we can, you know, get the information that we need. Um, and then, you know, depending, so going back to the service request components, so let's say the advisor, you know, enters in three or four different service requests, you know, everyone on the team knows their primary, you know, roles and responsibilities, um, and they will go and, you know, they will, they'll go to that queue, and then they will go and, um, you know, manage and facilitate, you know, the, the request from there. Okay. John, this question comes from Vanessa. How do you label the acid movement transactions that are sent to the advisors. How does the system not get clogged by pending tasks? So 
for the service request, that, that's actually one of the nice things about the service request is that it is, it's not creating tasks. Um, it is the, the, it is creating a, it's creating a new service request, um, within the custom object. So the, it's not actually creating a task, um, per se within the system. And then, you know, the client service team, what, what they do is they do receive, you know, they basically receive a, a automated email so they know that that service request is available. And then what we have set up within Salesforce is, um, each individual has, you know, a view within the, you know, within the custom object, and they, that's how they manage the, you know, the service request from there. Okay. And then we, well, we, and then we, also, we also have another view for, you know, service requests that haven't been assigned. So, you know, that allows my director of client service to, you know, have the appropriate oversight to make sure, you know, everything's getting, you know, everything's getting at least touched in a timely manner. Okay. Uh, Lisa's got a question, and let me just quote what she's saying here. Do we need to build it, or does it come with what you showed us? And I think she's talking probably about some of the processes you showed, and maybe uh, you can start with the answer with what you what you started with from Navitar, and, and maybe uh, Kaitin can augment your, your answer. Sure. Um, so a lot of what you saw was was... Basically, you know, what, with what Navitar provides is really the, the baseline um, template, let's call it. And then, you know, you have the ability to then um, really kind of fully customize from there. Um, you know, there are some, uh, you know, Salesforce-specific limit limitations. Um, but, you know, one of the things that, that we found as far as working through the process um, with Navitar is that they were really able to navigate and even if we did have to you know implement a workaround um, it's still you know it, it, it's still uh, you know the, the system still really you know worked well for what we were trying to accomplish so the, I guess, and the one I guess the one last component I mean you know what will end up happening is that you know as you are you know once you kind of go through the initial training and process you know you will have you know someone on Navitar's team that you know you'll be able to go to and and kind of work through, you know, okay, here's what we're trying to accomplish, here's our process, how do, you know, how do we build that out, and they can, you know, help walk you through um, what's appropriate, and, um, you know, they could certainly look and see what, what you know, what we have done and, and utilize some of that functionality as well, so. Uh, Kate, maybe you want to add to that. I've also gotten a few questions here. What's the difference between Salesforce and Navitar? Right. Yeah, so... Uh I'll just add add to uh, what John had mentioned there. Uh, from a Navitar perspective, kind of when we designed the product, what we have done is we've included a whole set of tools and and workflow components. Uh, John had mentioned kind of auto plan as as kind of the name of the tool that we have, and what that allows you to do is kind of makes it much easier for you to set up your processes and your workflows. We do recognize that kind of each advisor has their own kind of specific ways in which they want to handle their processes. Uh, so using the Navitar workflows and using the Navitar functionality, it becomes much easier to, to then specifically build out the processes. And that's covered as part of our service and our concierge team helps with all of that. And kind of as, as John alluded to this, I mean, that this entire setup, all the different things just took a, took a couple of months uh, for them. Uh, all right. So going back to Alan, kind of your, I think the question was Salesforce and Navitar. So Salesforce, obviously, we use Salesforce as the underlying infrastructure, uh, which is the platform. And on top of that platform, we have built industry-specific functionality and workflows and tools that we feel the advisors need on a day-to-day -day basis. So kind of the Navitar solution includes all of this, uh, including the underlying uh, Salesforce uh, infrastructure. Okay, thanks, Kaden. Now we've got uh, another follow-up question from Andrew number two. Uh, follow up on my question for multiple requests at the same time. If different client service reps need docs signed for a request, how is it coordinated in the system 
to not have multiple specialized reps reaching out to the client at the same time. Did you catch that, John, or should I read it again? Yeah, uh, read it. Read it again. Okay. Uh, Andrew's following up on his question for multiple requests at the same time. If okay. different client services reps need docs signed for a request, how is it coordinated in the system to not have multiple specialized reps reaching out to the client at the same time? Okay, I think I, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of understanding. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure if this is coming more from a new account perspective or if this is you know uh, uh, coming from more of an uh, you know an asset movement or you know maybe just a normal um, account servicing um, related piece. You know everyone everyone on the team. I mean, normally, if if you're going to have um, you know kind of specific uh, if they're going to be similar specific requests, those are probably all being handled or managed uh, by the same primary person on the team. Um, so if that's the case, then obviously they are, you know, they will see all of those, diff you know, all of those different requests come through, and you know, won't reach out to the client until you know all of the appropriate, uh, you know, until they've completed kind of that that paperwork package. From a new account perspective, um, you know, all of those are going to be entered. Uh, you know, pretty close, and and um, you know, we have our service standard for for paperwork is really 24 or 48 hours, um, and so you know that we don't we wouldn't have the instance where you know kind of miscellaneous uh, paperwork or requests is getting sent out to the client. Hopefully, that answers the question. Uh, we will see. Uh, again, if you have any questions. Uh, please put them into the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Though I think we've gone through all the questions. I don't see any more coming up. Uh, John, if you will, just put up that perhaps last slide. All right. So uh, this has been great, John. Uh, thank you so much for, for today's presentation. We really appreciate it, and it's great having you on. Uh, John Van Sant is president of Cascade Financial Management. Uh, we also had Caden Konkar, who is the leader of all Navitar product and services. I'm Alan Siegert, and I want to thank each and every one of you today for joining the webinar. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you might have for Cascade or for Navitar. And again, thank you all sincerely for joining us today. We look forward to talking to you, and we hope you have a great day.